So much to touch on on today's show, but first, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you like our coverage of the reigning NBA champions. We bring you year-round Dubs coverage that's informative, entertaining, and really will teach you about the game of basketball and the Golden State Warriors, news, rumors, and breaking news. And we're trying to get to 50,000 subscribers as soon as possible. Right now, 46,435. And actually, with our live ticker, we just picked up another new subscriber. Make sure you subscribe as well as we got you covered with the best coverage on the Golden State Warriors. So with that, let's begin today's show. This is Golden State Warriors Today. So yeah, we're here in the middle of October, but for those of you who celebrate Thanksgiving, you get really excited about a full plate of food. Well, right here, a full plate of subject matters to talk about here on Golden State Warriors today. Andrew Wiggins signing that contract extension on the same day as Jordan Poole. Jordan Poole, for the first time, spoke for the first time about that Draymond Green altercation. And is this going to be Draymond's last year on the Golden State Warriors because they paid Wiggins? and they paid pool. I think there's a little bit of an underlying message there. We'll get to that on the back half of the show. First, though, let's begin with this. So over the weekend, I brought you that video from home about Jordan Poole signing that contract extension early on Saturday morning, and then a few hours later, the Warriors locking down another one of their key components, key ingredients, and key young players on this roster in Andrew Wiggins. He's actually taken a pay cut Four years, $109 million, and this is really well-deserved for Andrew Wiggins. And I give him props for taking less money to stay with the team that he's familiar with, where he is a very key ingredient and piece, and a situation and a basketball environment that I think will bring the best out of Andrew Wiggins and has. He could have gotten the bag more so with a different team in the NBA. He stays with the Golden State Warriors, which I think is the best situation for him personally, and it allows him to continue to grow as a player on both ends of the floor because this player development program is just insane. Now, stats with the Warriors. Andrew Wiggins has been everything that Golden State could have hoped for and even more, I believe, because he suffered from a little bit of a lack of mental confidence with the Minnesota Timberwolves after not living up to those expectations of being that number one pick by the Cleveland Cavaliers. You'll take this, folks, especially with the construction of this roster. 18 points per game, high-level defense, 47% from the field, 38% from three-point range. That's above league average. And last year was really Wiggins' breakout year. First all-star appearance in his career and then in the NBA playoffs I thought the guy was fantastic now a lot of you might be concerned about the three-point numbers going down I'm not why he made up for it stellar phenomenal first-rate defense against Jason Tatum and really all throughout the NBA playoffs going also up against guys like Luka Doncic and was spectacular on both ends of the floor he is a key component to what the Warriors want to do both culturally and on the basketball floor you think about his offensive fit He's a super athlete. He can rise up, rebound the basketball. Really heady basketball player, too, which I think is very underrated for him. Backdoor cuts, proper screens, good movement, the occasional three-point shot. And when you need that athlete who's long, who's athletic, to create and get to the rim, maybe throw down an athletic hammer or on the defensive end, come through with a critical stop, Andrew Wiggins puts a check by all of those boxes. So to show Andrew Wiggins some love, I know a lot of you like him here on the channel, because anytime we talk about him, the videos pop off, type 22, his jersey number right now in the comment section. Now we shift gears to another young player who also got the bag, and an even younger player in Jordan Poole. Speaking for the first time since that altercation with Draymond Green, and we kind of predicted this last week, right? Why talk about that fight with Draymond before you get that contract? Don't mess up your money. Talk after the fact. That's exactly what Jordan Poole did. That's why you subscribe, by the way. We're always ahead of the game. Jordan Poole on that altercation and the supposed beef with Draymond Green. Draymond apologized, and we're planning to handle it ourselves that way. We're going to play basketball, and everybody in the locker room on our team knows what it takes to win a championship. We're going to do that on the court. That's really all I have to say on the matter. We're here to win a championship and keep hanging banners, anything in regards to the contract situation, the extension, us winning back-to-back -back championships, any basketball-related questions, I'm all ears. This is pretty interesting. I don't think this points to Jordan Poole being happy about the situation. He didn't go out of his way to say, we squashed the beef, we're really good friends, we're going to move on from it. 
This is about as coach speak and cliche as it gets without really sending a ripple effect across that locker room. And I think that Draymond Green has to be jealous about Jordan Poole getting that contract extension. He has to understand because he's a smart businessman as well with how well his podcast is moving and all of his other business entities to see when a guy like Andrew Wiggins also gets paid and he doesn't, that money is running out. The luxury tax bill for the Warriors, Coop, what, $450 million, $500 million this upcoming season when these contracts start to set in? They're not going to have a lot of money for Draymond Green. So is the writing on the wall that Draymond is going to leave or not be wanted back with the Golden State Warriors? I think it's worthy to have that conversation right now because think about how businesses work. If I get a raise and producer Coop gets a raise, but somebody else doesn't get a raise, are they scratching their heads saying, well, what's going on here? They got raises. I didn't get a raise. We're all doing the same duties here at Chat Sports. Is the writing on the wall that my employer and my company doesn't want me and they don't want to well compensate me like my other coworkers? It's a real life situation there. Chris Haynes on the altercation. Tension had been building up between Poole and teammates who noticed a change in Poole's behavior throughout training camp. There's been speculation that the change stems from Poole being on the verge of securing that contract extension. I'll tell you this. If Chat Sports came to me and said, look, we want to give you this contract and we're not going to be able to give it to you for a little while, but we're going to pay you some big time money. Just keep it on the low. I'd probably keep a low profile. I'd carry myself a little bit differently because I'm not going to mess up my bag. Jordan Poole did that as well. Who is to blame in this situation? Do you think it's Jordan Poole type JP? Do you think it's Draymond Green type DG? In the comment section, let us know. We always appreciate your basketball feedback, especially on the Golden State Warriors. Our presenting sponsor for today is BetUS, the best sports book that is out there right now. And as sports gambling continues to ascend and blow up, there's only one place to get your bets in. It's BetUS. Chatsports.com slash bet, promo code chat125 for a 125% deposit bonus. Opening night, folks, it's this week. Golden State Warriors tomorrow, Tuesday, if you're watching us on Monday, Six and a half point favorites against the Los Angeles Lakers. The over under 227. I think the Warriors are going to win by at least 10. You want to get those bets in? It's chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code chat125. All right, let's go back to Draymond Green here. Is it his last year with the Golden State Warriors? And could he go to a team like the Los Angeles Lakers? With Poole and Wiggins signing extensions, is this the final year that Draymond has in the Bay Area? Because he let it be known that... He wants to get paid. And for one of the best defensive players of this generation, he probably wants one more big contract before his NBA career really starts to get on the tail end of it if it's not already there. Stephen A. Smith on Draymond. Draymond is expecting this to be his last year in Golden State. He wants to be a Laker. We talked about this the other day. He ain't going to tell anybody that, but I don't, don't think I don't know. He'd prefer to be a Laker if he's got to leave Golden State. So Lakers, maybe, maybe not. Certainly makes sense. I think that he would be a good fit with Los Angeles. And again, yes, we talked about Draymond going to Los Angeles, but let's tie it back. Jordan Poole gets paid. Andrew Wiggins gets paid. And Draymond Green doesn't get paid. And the future of the Dubs, they might try to go younger. And also them signing these players to contract extensions. They are locking up their youth. Maybe not going after that veteran type of player like Draymond. And you have to think that maybe Jonathan Kaminga, down the road after being the number seven pick in the 2021 NBA draft is the eventual replacement for Draymond Green. He could be the future. And look, I think that Draymond is gone. I really do. I firmly believe that this will be Draymond Green's last year with the Golden State Warriors for a couple of reasons. I think that some people within that organization have grown tired of Draymond and his antics, but also let's just look at it from the most important component here. It's the basketball standpoint. And this guy doesn't have a lot of prime years left, especially for a max deal that he is seeking. And the Warriors are not seeking in giving to him. As for Draymond's deal, this year, $25.8 million. He might look for more because value of NBA contracts have increased. There's that player option for next year. If he declines it, becomes a free agent, he could sign for more money elsewhere. He's eligible for a $138 million per year max. And the next five years would be $164 million. Warriors ain't going to pay that, folks. They're not going to pay that. And I don't think that Draymond is going to take a hometown discount. 
Now, here are the pluses with Draymond. Of course, one of the best defenders ever. Critical to the culture and toughness of the Warriors and how they've been able to win championships. His particular role has been paramount as the enforcer, the leader, a guy who's smart, a dog, can't really replace what he brings. He is incredibly unique. The negatives with Draymond, though, 32 years old. He's a declining offensive player at times, an offensive liability like he was against the Boston Celtics, and that's why Steve Kerr had to bench him. And how does he age on a max deal? I don't think particularly all that well. So what do you think? Another question for the homies. Dub Nation, show up, show out. Should the Warriors keep Draymond Green? Why for yes and for no? Once again, get that comment section popping. And while you scroll down there, make sure you subscribe to the channel. It's YouTube.com slash Warriors TV. Lock us in for Warriors coverage all year round.